So you were Elvis's mechanic and you're still a mechanic today? I have a repair shop, service cars and stuff. And of course he brought his cars to me. I didn't actually work at his house. I mean, I took care of all his car. He started trading with me in 1960. We had the car in the wash bay, we called it. And the guy was washing the car. Of course, I went back there just looking at the car like you would, you know. And uh, I opened the door on the right rear of it. it was a, I believe it was a, a limo. It was a son of Mercedes, a Cadillac, I believe. Anyway. And I look, was looking at it, and I looked down in the floorboard, and I saw a hundred dollar bill in there. I thought it was a playmate. And uh, but anyway, I picked it up and looked at it, and of course, it's a real thing. And uh, so, you know, all the guys that worked for Elvis, his uncle was on the gate. His name was Smith, uh, Travis Smith. That was uh, Elvis's mother's brother. Mm -hmm. Uh, he was a gate man at that time. And, uh, and Joe Esposito, Alan Porter, Richard Davis, and Marty Liker, and all these guys worked for it. Well, they was in and out of the station two or three times a week buying gas and stuff like that. I told Travis, that was his uncle, that I found the hundred dollar bill in there with his car. And if he wanted to come down there and get it. And Travis said, well, I'll give it to him. I said, no. I said, you tell, tell us I found it. He wants you to come ask you. I guess a couple of days later, about 6 o'clock in the evening, one afternoon, I come rolling in the driveway and I knew T Bird and his dad and wanted to know who found the money. And I was out there on the driveway putting a headlight or something in a car. And of course, I spoke up and said, I found the money. And if I, if I don't remember all the details, but I remember. I give him his hundred dollar bill, and he give and he said, "Honest man, honest man," and uh, he gave me ten dollars. Oh, nice tip! <laughs> and, uh, if his dad hadn't been with him, he probably told him to keep it. His dad was, you know, real conservative. After that, he always brought all his cars to me. I, well, I go up there and pick them up. Do great. And in front of these service, and I just go up and of course they didn't think it was about me coming up there and being in the family. I'd walk in the front door and go out the back. Over the years, then I got all this business uh, up until he died, and of course, after he died, the dad took over, and I still took care of his car, you know. So, For his dad? Yeah, so his dad died. Wow. So, where was your shop at? Uh, right here at Elvis Preston Range, right up three here about uh, two blocks. Okay, yeah. closer right to Marlowe's? It's not there anymore, it's a CVS drugstore. You'll see a CVS drugstore, then a, the next building is a shop. Okay. Yeah, boy, I used to own that, and it was called uh, Billy Strong's Firestone. And, uh, and he traded, he did business with me there too, because I moved from the first location when he first started trading to that location. But he still came up there. In fact, the seller uh, brought her little red Corvair of her and, <laughs> and got it serviced, and she waited in the waiting room while, while we serviced it. Really? And he had an old motorhome, RV, that they used to travel in. And, we had it up there and worked on it. He, he did a lot of the driving of the motorhome itself. Mm -hmm. And the dimmer switch on the headlights was in the floorboard. You had to work it with your foot. He didn't like that. So he wanted it up where he could work it with his hand. Mm -hmm. So we moved the dimmer switch up by the steering wheel where he could work it with his hand. You know? so, cool. Yeah, <laughs> okay. That's cool. And, you know, just different things. Custom things. Yeah. Just oh. different things over the years. You know? What year was it that you oh. first met him? Was it? Uh, it was about 1960 when he found the money in the car. Yeah, see, 60 till he died in what, 77? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then and for, Vernon's cars. continued after that. So I probably took care of him 20 years. Wow. Yeah, so you were invited inside Graceland? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember this. I was up at Graceland one day, went up there to get some cars to service. And it was about, I guess, 10.30 in the morning. And Elvis and Priscilla and, I don't know, Joe, if they were there, whoever, you know, his people that travel. They came 
up the driveway and came around the back of the house. That's where they parked all the cars and over there and I was back there. And when they got out of the car, they had on their wedding clothes. You know, the Elvis, when Elvis got married. And evidently, they had two weddings. They had one in Las Vegas, and they had one here. Yeah. And then the one they had here that day, they probably had the wedding and just came on out to the house after that. So that's when you saw them? And that's when they still had the wedding. Going. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. But I remember, I remember Elvis got out of the car and he fell in, you know, she had on her dress and everything. Mm -hmm. And somebody had given Elvis this dog. I don't know, I forgot what kind of dog it was, a big dog. And of course the dog was barking at him because, you know, he was strange to the dog. And he always jumped out there, you know, with his karate. <laughs> <laughs> he just, you know, just a regular guy, you know, to That's me. That's cool. And, uh, That's uh, funny, you showed up at his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but like I said, I, I go in the jungle room. Actually, Marty Lacker, mm -hmm. you know, you probably know him. He's yeah. Pretty, he's pretty, he's mm -hmm. dead now. But uh, he wanted to always have a list of what they wanted done to the car. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd meet him up there in, a, in, in the jungle. We'd we'll go back there and sit down in the jungle. I mean, you know, he'd tell me they want this done to this by my mind. You know. uh, so he usually took care of that. Then Richard Davis, uh, this was back you know, early on when they used to travel by car to California. His job was to look after Elvis's clothes. And uh, they had a, a, a little trailer, like a horse trailer, mm -hmm. that they pulled behind a black Chrysler station wagon. And in this uh, little trailer, horse trailer, they had a picture had all the Elvis's clothes in it. In the trailer? Yeah, in the <laughs> hanging. Oh. You, you know. Dad and work for him was named uh, Alan Fortas. Uh, his uncle, uh, Fortas, was on the Supreme Court. I, I'm trying to remember his uncle's name, but he was a member of the Supreme Court. You know, oh. and, uh, but anyway, he died. He died young. Hmm. Of course, no, all of them now have passed away. Charlie Hodge, and Joe Esposito, and Hardy Lacker, Richard Davis, Red West, you know, all of them gone. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but I knew them all, and they knew me very well. When they were in California, and they was traveling by car, of course, in California, they didn't have any snow or any weather like we have here. Right. And uh, sometimes when they would leave California to come here in the wintertime, the roads would be real icy and snowy, you know, mm -hmm. and you, you couldn't, they couldn't buy tire chains out there in California. <laughs> they didn't need them. So, and so Elvis and them called us, and me and them to ship them some tire chains. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, they were like that. So what was, what was he like? He, he's uh, just really a normal, you know, regular person. He was, uh, of course, he has been treated like a king. And, and, uh, and that's where he acted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I went up there, and uh, when I went up there, well, I walked back in the jungle room, and and uh, and uh, Charlie Hodge and, and a bunch of guys were going around. They looking, turning pillows up off the couch, and looking here, and they looking over there, and this, and, and all this kind of stuff. And I said, "What are y'all doing?" And they said, well, Elvis has got this cap, this boat cap that he wore in the movie, and he wears that all the time, and he has lost the cap, and he's after us to find it. <laughs> Did they find it? I don't know. <laughs> I knew his aunt real well, uh, which was his daddy's sister. Aunt Delta? Delta B. Yeah. And she run the house. And of course she was tough. She, yeah. She cussed like a sailor. <laughs> <laughs> and Elvis didn't get her any stuff. He he walked aside when he came to her. Oh. And I took care of her car, and she called me, and she was crazy about that car. And she had some kind of little dog, you know. <laughs> it was always a dog. Know, I would just like the rest of them. You know? 
No. Fort Vernon, same way. They were good folks. Yeah. Her brother, two or three of them worked. Of course, Travis was her brother. He was the gate man. The first, yeah. He was the first gate man. Mm -hmm. And he had another, she had another brother they called Slim. They called Slim guy. I think he was alcoholic. But his job was to uh, take care of the garbage hauled off. In other words, they had a, <clears throat> a Chevrolet panel truck, an old panel truck. Mm -hmm. And he'd take that truck and pick up the garbage in the back and take it somewhere because they didn't pick it up then. And I remember this day in, in December, Elvis always went up town on Christmas in December and give away money. Okay, this particular day, I went up for something, and Elvis and his crew were in the limo coming down the driveway to the street, and Slim, his uncle, with the garbage truck, <laughs> was in the old garbage truck. He had started up the driveway, and he's about halfway up it, and here comes Elvis in his limo down from the house and Slim didn't move the truck like he was supposed to so Elvis stopped the limo and stepped outside and used some bad words and told him to move it out of the way. I can't tell you what he said. You know, just regular people, really. Yeah. He was a good person, you know. He, mm -hmm. Free hearted, uh, I guess that's a country word. And, uh, they seemed very loyal to you. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah they shared course, the, uh, your think, business with everyone. Yeah. He, they even, uh, when he was out, he and his uh, guys was out at night partying, carrying on some time. At one time, I remember, uh, they were out about 2 o'clock in the morning. They run out of money. Of course, they couldn't get a check day. And they called me at 2.30 in the morning to get a check day. Because, you know, I had a business. I had always had, you know, money. Oh, they called me. They thought of you. Said, you know, we need some money. <laughs> you know, so, so you gave them the money? Yeah, yes, it did. And of course, I used to cash all the payroll checks, though. They were never Friday when all the guys got paid, where they come yeah. to the station down there and I'd cash the checks, you know. <laughs> but I never did think about taking a picture of the check or yeah. at it or anything like that. Just business as usual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, That's funny. That's funny that he thought of you. He's like, I know somebody with a lot of cash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, cool. he was just. I guess uh, uh, he, he was just a country, I was a country boy like him, or he was a country boy like me. In other words, I brought up in the country, very poor, and so was he. You know? yeah. and, and of course, on top of that, we were about the same age. You know? mm. and, uh, so I you know, guess that had something to do with it. Yeah.